Hello folks, welcome to Visor Down. I am Toad and welcome to our review of the new Yamaha MT-09 SP. This is of course the 2021 reboot of the MT-09 SP. What is it? Well, it's £10,202, which makes it 1,200 quid more there or thereabouts than the stock MT-09. And what we've been doing today, or I've been doing today particularly, is trying to find out if it's worth the extra cash. I've got an MT-09 stock long-termer for this year, which I have just completed the running in process, so that's off getting its first service as we film this. So it was a really, really good opportunity for me to jump straight from the MT-09 onto the SP version and actually just see what the bike is all about and, and sort of get a good feel for it. I'm just gonna go through um, sort of the high level specs of the engine first and foremost. So this is of course the new uh, 889cc CP3 motor. So they've stretched out the stroke of the engine by three millimeters, which has given it a 49cc increase in capacity over the old model. What does that mean? In real terms, it means you've got a boost in mid-range torque and you've got a boost in top-end power. So we've got a 119 PS, which is claimed from uh, Yamaha, and we have got peak torque of 93 Newton meters. I mean, to be honest with you, the MT-09 and the MT-09 SP, they were never really lacking in either mid-range grunt or torque or power, really. It was just this kind of magical combination of uh, bits of flying metal flying around within some engine casings that just created a really, really enjoyable thing to ride on the road um, and it hasn't changed in that respect what has changed is that Yamaha have seemed to sort of like tame the MT-09 CP3 engine they've not completely neutered it they've not squeezed all the fun out of the engine they've just calmed it down a little bit and it's a little bit tempered it's still more than capable of bringing an absolute smile to your face we've been having a lot of fun riding it on the road today the pace has been really really quick and then we've come here to a disused airbase where i'm stood in a hangar where they used to take uh, test jet engines which is quite appropriate and then we've been hooning them up and down the runway which has been wheelie wheelie good fun so i mean the biggest difference and what you're really paying your extra 1200 quid for if you opt for the sp over the standard variant of the mt09 is the suspension setup so the the sp has always had a more trick and a slightly more sophisticated setup it is still basically the same so we've got the kyb fully adjustable forks up front and we have got tucked underneath the rear of the bike we've got an olin's uh, adjustable shock absorber with a, a separate remote preload adjuster as well so is it worth it for the extra suspension that you're getting? I'm gonna say yes with a caveat. If you're the sort of person who really wants to exploit this motorcycle and take it up to the limit of what it can do, either on road or track, you are gonna feel the difference of the suspension. That's, there is a, a, another caveat to that though, in that the standard MT-09 for 2021 has actually come on leaps and bounds in the suspension and the chassis front. It's a lot better and a lot more poised and a lot more sort of controlled and composed than the previous generation but when you really go on that extra sort of five percent and you take the bike really right up to what it can actually do on the road you can just feel that this is a much more balanced and a much more benign setup than the stock bike if you're the sort of person who isn't going to be exploiting this to its fullest and you're not going to be sort of ragging the thing to the to the red line and the ragged edge through every b road that you're going down you are going to be paying the extra 1200 quid for the blingy paint job and some orange anodized bits hanging underneath the bike so i'm going to go through the equipment of the bike now because this has had a big injection of technology for 2021 so we've got a new tft dash it's not the biggest sort of siziest class leading tft dash in the in the in the segment but it is really really clear and easy to read i do find that going through some of the um settings on the right hand uh handlebar you've got like a roller dial that you have to change the some of the settings and menus with i find it a little bit clumsy it could just be me because i've only ridden this bike while wearing sort of big winter gloves and I don't think they're possibly getting on with it quite as well. Within the menus here, we have got, obviously you've got the quick shifter um, down there. We've also got um, wheelie control. So you've got, well, Yamaha call it lift control. We've got cornering ABS. You've got lean sensitive traction control. You've got slide control. And it's all kind of trickled down from the R1M. So it is all sort of the, the IMU system and the electronics and everything else have all kind of come from the R1M and then been adapted for the new MT-09 and mt 9 s SP. Um, I do really like the lift control on the bike. You can sort of set it at a level and pop the front wheel up and the bike really won't come any higher than that, which is a nice little safety net. Um, and you can feel it gradually getting higher as you reduce the level of, of intervention on there. Um, 
You can also turn off the traction control altogether. The only thing that you can't really turn off is the um, ABS system on the bike. But again, that's going to be some regulatory Euro bollocks that we have to adhere to. So I really want to talk about this, both of the MT-09s really, the MT-09 stock bike and the MT-09 SP. They are just in this real fun zone of motorcycling where you've got over 100 horsepower and these have got, you know, get on for 120 horsepower and they weigh less than 200 kilograms. And that is like this really nice hinterland where you can pretty much exploit everything that the bike has got to offer on the road without going brain out lunacy speeds. It's a lot of fun to ride. The latest generation and this SP especially, it's very, very trick. I mean, I was trying to think how they could improve it over the previous generation SP. Um, and without changing the suspension, they've kept the suspension the same and basically just changed the motor and updated the electronics and everything else. It is just so much better than the old bike. It is a really, really capable tool. And as I was riding it today, admittedly on some fairly twisty and fairly um, sort of tight roads, I was thinking to myself, who needs a bike like an MT-10 or a Street Fighter or a Speed Triple? It, it, when you ride something that has got this much composure and this much poise and can go as well as it does, it makes you wonder why you'd spend the extra money on something that was miles more powerful that you're never ever going to exploit. I'm just going to talk about what we like about the MT-09 SP. So the, the long stroke CP3 motor is an absolute diamond. Uh, I love it and I love the way that Yamaha have sort of tamed the character of it without completely losing that character. It's still definitely a very, very playful unit. Um, I also like the styling and it's not everyone's cup of tea and I've said it before, it does grow on you and it looks better in the flesh than it does on photographs and on a, a computer screen as well. Um, I also rode um, down from Coventry over to uh, Ipswich on it yesterday, which was all down the A14, which is possibly the most mind-numbing and arse-numbing road in the country. And I've got to say that the sort of the semi-long distance comfort, I was on it for a good sort of three and a half hours or so because we had traffic. Long distance comfort is actually really very good. The seat this year has been updated. Um, so it's a bit more contoured and the pillion seat is much bigger than it was last year as well. I can vouch for that because I did a hundred miles on the pillion of the old one and it wasn't a good place to be. What don't we like about the MT-09s uh, and the SP? Th this whole menu thing is a little bit fiddly on the right hand handlebar with the kind of the roller wheel that you use to go through the menus. I'm sure I'm going to get used to it and like I said it could be that I'm just using it with winter gloves. I will try it out with some thinner ones and see if it's any better. Um, the other thing that does irk me slightly is that if you really, really wanted an MT-09 with cruise control, you're gonna to have to stump up the 1200 quid for the SP version because the stock one doesn't come with it, but the SP does. So effectively, you're gonna to have to buy all of this even if you just want cruise control because you, you do a lot of motorway riding, which is, yeah, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a pain in the bum. <laughs> I've had an absolute hoot today. Um, I do think that if I was gonna pay my own money and I was gonna walk into a Yamaha dealership, I would be stumping up the extra 1200 quid for the SP variant. I mean, it is gonna be peanuts on a PCP deal, which I'd be buying the bike on anyway. And for me, it just gives the bike this air of class that um, the other bike has kind of got, but just not in the in the bucket loads that this has. This has got proper, proper B-road shredding ability. Um, and I'm really looking forward to a little bit later on this year when we can actually get the stock bike and the SP out and take them on a track day and see what they can actually do. So these are gonna be in dealerships now. Like I said, it's coming in at 10,202 pounds um, for the SP variant on that one. Um, so, I mean, give it a chance. It is a bike you need to look at in the flesh. So I know we haven't been able to do that so far without bike shows and with all the dealers being closed. Trust me, it's a bike that you need to see in the flesh. Please give the MT-09 SP a chance. Thanks very much for watching, folks. I've been Toad. Have a good day.